when Joseph's brothers came down to Egypt, they didn't recognize him because he walked like an Egyptian. <laughs> he totally Egyptian. We interviewed the chosen Bible scholars, Rabbi Jason Sobel, Dr. Doug Huffman, and Father David Guffey at Chosen Con. We're talking about my favorite scene from The Chosen and how it portrays an authentic Jesus. It's the scene with the woman with the issue of blood. And her you, being healed. You had some audible awes on that, that bro. Yeah! <laughs> How has Chosen done at portraying uh, an authentic Jesus? One of the things that I love about The Chosen is that more than any other production, it has really captured the Jewishness of Yeshua, it's Hebrew name, Jesus. He says in Matthew, what can a scribe who understands the kingdom of God be compared to? like a householder that brings forth treasures new and old, and for too long, believers have settled for half an inheritance. Mm. Yeah. And the full inheritance is the old and the new coming together. It's the Gentile and Jew Come coming yes. together in the Messiah. I you love, see my I face? Love you. You, you, you were pounding the, the couch there. He just went right after, mm. you know, Jew, Gentile. And when he said settling for half an inheritance, it was like, yeah. Woo! It's a great passage, too, because that passage is not usually quoted. You know, it's usually like just the new things. We just want the right. the new car. We wouldn't want the old car. Out with the old. In right, but new, he's saying, right? actually, in mm. that passage, it's bringing out the fact that both are good. Yeah. It helps us see the Bible in high definition. Yeah. yeah. You know, for example, when, you know, historically, when people read the account of the woman with the flow touching the hem of the garment, they're like, oh, we just touched the corner of his robe. Right. But no, he touched the seat seat. He touched the ritual fringes that were commanded in the Torah, representing of the 613 we spoke, 613 commandments, in fulfillment of a prophecy that says the son of righteousness will rise up with healing in his wings. The word for wings is the same word for the hem of the garment, arbachon fot in Hebrew. And then it ties into this prophecy in Zechariah that talks about how in the day of Messiah's return and the establishment of the kingdom, 10 uh, Gentiles will grab the hem, the seed seat of the garment of the Jew and say, come, let us go up with you. Yeah. And so it's actually a sneak picture of that unity in the Messiah. And so I love how the chosen brings us together. And I like that he's taking these passages and going directly after Jew-Gentile unity. Right. That's like, uh, he's making it plain. Right. You could talk about it and around it, and you know the the language is is beautiful in the scriptures, mm -hmm. but he's like, here's what this means. Right. This is this is this is the end of the age. This is when you know this is the, this is what the Lord is doing through His shed blood is bringing the body together, mm -hmm. Jew and Gentile. The New Testament was written in the first century to people that knew first century culture. Some of us are far some of us are far removed. <laughs> from the culture of the first century. How old are you, Jason? <laughs> that, that was a good, good one. That was a good one. Did you remember you did that, no. Joe? Well, I don't remember it either. That was great. I look good for my age. Ah, <laughs> that was, he's quick. So here's a, a woman with a flow of blood, nicely sanitized in our New Testament as we're mm, reading right, it. Right. We don't really understand the cultural baggage that that brings upon this woman. For us to understand, oh, the, the Bible actually talks about people's real problems. Yes. Yes. Like this was a woman's real problem. She wasn't just sick physically. This was a social problem. Yeah. This was a problem for her in worship. Yeah. This was a problem for her interacting with other people in day-to-day -day society. She has a multi-dimensional issue that affects every every area of her life, and Yeshua addresses all of it in, in, in one instance, which yeah. is just beautiful. It's bringing so much together. It's, yeah. I, that's why I love this story. I mean, yeah. it's just, and it was just depicted so well on film and mm -hmm. high definition. Exactly. Uh, as Rabbi Sobel was saying. Yeah, and it's fun to like, with a bunch of Bible nerds right here, pick it apart a little bit. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, it's the stories we've loved and read and mm -hmm. studied, see it. Yeah. And when it's done well, like this scene, it's like, oh yeah. Mm. Like, oh, that's so fun to see it. Yeah. So with the tzitzit and with, you know, the, the implications of all this healing, yeah, it's, it's just 
it's fun for Bible nerds for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not sure that the first century when Jesus lived would have looked exactly like this. But I think what the series represents is a truth about the way that we, we know about Jesus. One is that um, people came to know Jesus through per very personal encounters, mm -hmm. yeah. like the encounter with Veronica. Right. And then people came to know Jesus by sharing their encounters with one another. I love the scenes when they come back from mission and they're sharing the stories of how Jesus had worked through them. And I think um, that's a definite truth of how Christ is known through personal encounter, through shared encounter that's then shared with other people. And I love what he was saying there where, in my words, yeah, this is not exactly how it was in the first century. Right. But, because I was asking that question about authentic mm -hmm. Yeshua, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. he was saying, but we're trying to capture the essence mm -hmm. of who he was and how what he did and right. what that looks like. So it was a good way of saying, look, we're not saying this is exactly how it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're trying, you yeah. know, we don't really even know exactly. Right. But we're trying to get the essence. Right. And that's really, I think, a good way to understand what the Chosen mm -hmm. is doing, is the essence of who Yeshua really is captured on film. Right. Whether that's really what the first century depiction looks like or not. And I love the scene with Veronica because I think she represents everyone who has some secret in their heart, in their soul that they feel shame about, that makes them feel isolated or separated or lonely from, up, from other people. Yeah. That Jesus could see that and that could heal that and that the power of faith can transform that and bring someone back, back into unity with the community. Continues his, his uh, discussion there and relates the healing back to unity, mm -hmm. which I, I, I mean, I, I was there obviously, but <laughs> I, didn't, I don't know, hopefully I picked we that up evidence. when I was there. We have evidence. But you know, I, that, that, that hit me afresh when he said it that way. It was like he was restoring unity within the community good. through this healing, right? Mm -hmm. And so I like, the multi-dimensional reality of Jesus and the, what he does is, man, it's amazing. I love that what you said was that it, it, it touched the individual, but it was also a part of the, the, the larger community. And that when they came back, they're sharing their individual uh, experience with the king, right? But then it, it, it affects the larger whole. And like you just said, how much we need, we need this individual reality with the Lord. We need a, a personal relationship with him. And yet we also need this. We need each other, yes. right? Because it's first and second commandment. Yes. I love how you rooted it, though, in first and second commandment. Right. right. So how unity mm -hmm. is connected in with first and second commandment. Totally. I mean, I argue totally. that the fullness of second commandment love mm -hmm. is the unity of the family. Yeah. If you like our videos, and you should. <laughs> Please make a donation and help us spread a biblical messianic worldview. What they were were witnesses giving a testimony. And the Hebrew word for testimony is the word aid. It is two letters, I and Dalit. And it's those two letters also can mean, uh, can also mean again, ode or aid. They share the same letters in Hebrew because a testimony is something God wants to do again and again and again. Mm. And that's the power of the, of the narratives of the gospels and the accounts that we read. It's not, yes, it's something that historically happened, but the power of it is, is some, that, that testimony, that witness is something God wants to do again in all of our lives. And I think that's part of the power of the chosen that people can encounter that in that way. And it's a story worth telling over and over and yeah. over again. Yeah. Yeah. And by the spirit that we can share, even if the story comes from a different cultural background or you know, some other kind of different background. I love how- Oh man, right? You could just kind of feel the Holy Spirit. Right? Was, you know, it's oh. just, they're like, yeah, and then this, and then mm. this, and- I was just feeling and, that, yeah. Right? I love like, it. There's, there's such a unity mm -hmm. in the room. There's such a unity with distinction mm -hmm. among the Bible scholars, yeah. right? We've got you know, a Messianic Jewish rabbi, uh, an evangelical theologian, mm -hmm. and a Catholic priest, mm -hmm. but there's such a unity uh, and the Lord is with us. I felt like even when we were just having this conversation, there was so much unity on the stage where we were, mm -hmm. and even in the room, oh, yeah. you know, it was like the unity was just there. We were all mm -hmm. just soaking in the presence right. of the Lord and talking about talking about Yeshua, talking about unity. It's like, man, this is 
This is fun. This is where it's at. <laughs> I feel like now the chosen, like the Jewishness of Jesus has gone out to the four corners of the globe. You see the Jewishness of Jesus when she grabs his tzitzit. Maybe I'm overstating because I'm a little dramatic. <laughs> but, wait, 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 wait. wait. But I, I feel like it, it will change Jewish-Christian relations even. Because it's like, wow, this is, this is who Yeshua is. I think it's very significant because I think it's restoring something that's been lost. There was a decision, we won't go into the history, but there has been a stripping away of the Jewishness of Jesus and an exclusion of the Jewishness of the disciples and, and of the Jewish followers of Jesus historically. For example, you look at the famous picture of Da Vinci and at the Passover Seder, they're eating fluffy loaves of white wonder bread on the Feast of Unleavened Bread. <laughs> which the matzah being unleavened, pure, striped, bruised, broken, he chose that for a reason because it symbolized what he was going to go through for us, right? This is a great take here on the Jewishness of yep. Yeshua and yep. how it's just this something has changed over the centuries, uh, but it's being recaptured mm -hmm. here with the chosen mm -hmm. and i just i'm so excited about the fact that it's going to the four corners of the yeah. globe yeah and that he is being depicted uh in this jewish way mm -hmm. so it's such a big deal mm -hmm. yes for the believers but yes part of it to the jewish world as well because i think that it's kind of like jesus is literally the son of joseph and his he fulfills joseph as a type and the, when Joseph's brothers came down to Egypt, they didn't recognize him because he walked like an Egyptian. <laughs> <He walked like laughs> an Egyptian. <laughs> right? I gotta pause. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm stealing that. I'm totally stealing that. That's amazing. <laughs> and it wasn't until he took off his Egyptian garb that Armin he said, Ani Yosef, I'm Joseph, that his brothers recognized, wow, this is our brother. And in many ways, we've made Joseph an Egyptian. He's unrecognizable to the Jewish people. And so I think what the Chosen does is help him to become more recognizable, which is, I think, yes. I think this point is so amazing and good because yeah. this is something where people talk about that there's a veil over the Jewish people. Yeah. yeah. And I would say there's, it's that the, the spiritual veil can be um, removed by in the physical mm -hmm. telling the Jewish people mm -hmm. about the Jewishness of Yeshua. Yeah. So I think sometimes we think, oh, well, the only thing we could do is pray, and we do want to pray. Yeah. So this is an evangelistic, I think, key and tip is that we, but educating ourselves and understanding the Jewishness of Yeshua also helps then when we mm. share about Yeshua with Jewish people. Yeah. Because then they begin to see, oh, he's not this Egyptian God, right? This <laughs> yeah. other than God, but he's the Jewish Messiah. Right. right. And I think that's what he's pointing out that is just such an important point mm -hmm. for Jewish evangelism. For sure. I think that, that line struck me when he was talking about Joseph in Egypt. And when Joseph reveals who he is to his brothers, he says, Ani Yosef. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, wow. Something, something about hearing it yeah. in Hebrew hmm. was just different. I don't know. Like, and, and, you know, obviously there's, there's moments in that, in that passage where he's speaking Egyptian, right? He's using right. a translator, That's right? That's good. And then he switches, switches. over and oh. it's like, whoa. So just like yeah. letting that hit you mm. as like the power of that moment in Genesis. That's good. But then like, let's take that over. Like Rabbi Jason is saying is like, we need that to happen with Jesus and the Jewish people. Right. right. So that he says, Ani Yeshua. <laughs> right. You know? Like, yeah, that's good. You know, it's like this, yeah. I am Yeshua. I am your Messiah. So good. We want them to see him as he really is. As their Messiah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Their brother. Yeah. Right? Yes. I mean, that's the... Their flesh and blood. Their brother. Yeah. I mean, that Joseph analogy is like, it screams Yeshua, oh, right? Man. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. they rejected him. Mm-hmm. And yet, and then he what reveals himself, yep. and then they come back for their and, redemption, right? And he yeah. saves them. Yep. I mean, the, yep. it's all there it's in the story, there. right? Yep. Uh, it's just so beautiful. But uh, this goes all the way back to the, the book of Genesis, chapter twelve, um, with Abraham getting the promise of God, saying, 
I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you a land and descendants, but in you, all the nations of the world will be blessed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is part of God's design for salvation is yeah. to bring all the nations of the world, all the families of the earth right. will be blessed because of a Jewish boy yeah. <laughs> named Jesus. I really love that the chosen throughout the series has woven in the Psalms, which were totally clearly a part of the spiritual formation of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the Catholic tradition, it still are such an important part of Liturgy of the Hours and the, the liturgies that we have. And so it's been wonderful to see them prayed in context yeah. and reminding of their, the way that they, they come from a Jewish context they speak to the Christian heart even to today. Mm. Yeah, and I just wanted to say one thing, which is that I think that as we look at what's going on in Israel, in Gaza, you know, in the Jewish tradition as well, the Psalms are central to prayer and devotion. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think praying the Psalms over what's going on in the Middle East, what's going on in our world today is something that's really significant. As you said, something we see modeled in The Chosen. For context, mm -hmm. Chosen Con and this interview happened one week mm -hmm. after October 7th yeah. and the massacre, the horrific uh, invasion of Hamas into mm -hmm. uh, Israel uh, and the communities surrounding the Gaza Strip. Yeah, I mean, the Psalms, wow, I mean, they're always relevant. Yeah. I mean, you they have to be straight from heaven, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because they're so relevant in every situation throughout all time in history. So, yeah. I mean, who can do right. that, right? right? I mean, it was fun to be able to talk about fun and important to be able to talk about that where we were with the people we were right. with with what was going on in the world right. and, you know, our our hearts were breaking and 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 yet the Lord was leading us through the Psalms and then we were able to kind of talk about it and hopefully help equip people. Right. Like, I don't, I don't even know how to pray. Right. But, you know, uh, Father David, you know, brought out this point about the Psalms being read and the chosen and, and seeing it done beautifully. And then we were able to kind of just, you know, elaborate on this and it's, and it's still applicable where we are right now. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons for the unity in the room mm -hmm. actually had to do with the fact that yeah. this war just broke out. I think so. Because there was a solidarity it and was, a yeah. solemnness mm -hmm. and a help us God mm -hmm. uh, for what was happening to the Jewish people in Israel. Yep. And so I think people were wanting to know, you know, how do we pray? Yes. Let's come together. Let's uh, intercede on behalf of this situation. Totally. And it brought us all together. If you enjoyed this video and you want to watch the whole interview, click here. Did you do it? This Rabbi is actually Jason. really cracking. <laughs> this, is, this is really funny. <laughs> I think it's because we're doing a reaction video to, to ourselves. ourselves. <laughs> I've never done such a thing. Hey, the good news is, is that I'm not wearing the same pants and shirt in this video as oh. I am in that video. <laughs>